In this video, we'll discuss the continuity of trigonometric functions. Let's start with sine. Is the function fx equals to sine x continuous? Is it continuous for all inputs or does it have breaks? Think about it. Okay. Now, if we recall the graph of sine x, we can see that sine x is forever continuous. It is continuous throughout its domain. Now, our job is to prove this. And for the proof, we'll use this as the assumption. We'll use that the limit x approaches 0, sine of x is equal to 0. This is something that we can observe from the graph. We can see that around x equals to 0, the output sine of x is approaching 0. Now I agree, there are more rigorous proofs available online. Now we promise that we'll cover some of them someday. But for now, let's go with this one. So how do we prove this? Let's figure out the left hand and right hand limit. Let's start with the right hand limit. x approaching c plus sine of x. We can write this as limit h approaches 0. h is a very small positive quantity. Limit h approaches 0 sine of c plus h because we're approaching from the right hand side. So limit at a variable point c can be given as limit h approaching 0 sine of c cos of h plus cos of c sine of h. We've used sine of a plus b here. Sine a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. All right, let's spread the limit. Limit h approaches 0 sine c cos h plus limit h approaches 0 cos c sine h. All right, this is constant cos of c. h is approaching 0. We can bring cos c out. So this is limit h approaching 0 sine c cos h plus cos c out limit h approaching 0 sine of h. And this is where our assumption comes in handy. We can say that limit h approaching 0 sine of h, that's actually equal to 0. Sine x approaches 0 when h approaches 0. And here we have cos h, which approaches sine of 0, which is 1. So let's do that. Sine of c cos of 0 plus cos of c 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So this will be sine of c times 1 plus 0. This is sine c. So we have proved that at any point c, the right hand limit is actually equal to the value of the function, that's sine c. We'll have very similar steps for left hand limit. Pause the video, practice that on your own. Okay, let's do this together. Left hand limit at c is going to be limit x approaching c minus sine x. So this will be limit h approaching 0 sine of c minus h. We are moving from the left hand side, so we have c minus h. So here we can have sine of a minus b. So sine of a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So sine of c cos of h minus cos of c sine of h. We'll spread the limit. We'll have sine c cos 0 minus cos c sine h. That's going to be 0. So this is sine of c times 1, which is sine of c. So using the addition identity of sine, and the fact that limit h approaching 0 sine of h is 0, we've proved that the left hand limit and the right hand limit both are equal to the value of the function at c, that's sine c. So because this works for any value of c in the domain, we can say that fx equals to sine x, this function is continuous throughout. We can follow very similar steps for cos x as well. Pause the video, try this on your own. Okay. So this is the graph of cos x, as we can see that this graph is continuous throughout. But let's prove it using limits. Let's find the right hand limit first, x approaching c plus cos x. This is equal to limit h approaching 0 cos of c plus h. Here we can apply cos of a plus b, that's cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So that's going to be limit h approaching 0 cos c cos h minus limit h approaching 0 sin c sin h. And here sine c is constant, h approaching 0, sine h is going to give us 0. And here limit h approaching 0, cos h, that's going to give us 1, because cos of 0 is 1. So this is cos of c times 1, which is cos of c. Here again, the right hand limit of cos x is equal to the value of the function. Now let's find the left hand limit. Limit x approaching c minus cos x, that's going to be limit h approaching 0, cos of c minus h. Here we can apply cos of a minus b. That's cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. Applying the limits, we'll get cos of c. 
this will be zero, this will be one. So that's cos of C times one, that's cos of C. F of X is also cos of C. This means left hand limit is same as the right hand limit is same as the value of the function, which means that for all values in the domain, cos of X is continuous throughout. So this is cos X and sin X. But what if we have to prove the continuity for tan X? At what points F X equals to tan X is continuous? And can we prove this? Pause the video, give this a shot. Okay. So the graph of tan X looks like this. The first thing that we can notice is this is not continuous throughout. There are actual gaps, breaks in between. Where are these breaks? Well, the first break is at pi by two. Then we have three pi by two. Here's minus pi by two. Here's minus three pi by two. In fact, the breaks are at all odd multiples of pi by two. Why is tan X discontinuous at odd multiples of pi by two? Okay. So the answer lies in the definition of tan x. Tan x is equal to sin x by cos x. And here we can use the algebra of continuous functions. Two continuous functions, sin x and cos x are being divided. F is divided by g. So this is continuous, but all we have to make sure is that the denominator is not equal to zero. So this is continuous wherever g is not equal to zero. Now let's figure out where the denominator is zero. So cos x is zero for all odd multiples of pi by two. Cos pi by two is zero, cos three pi by two is zero, cos minus pi by two is zero. And that's why we're getting these breaks. Tan x is sin x by cos x and cos x is becoming zero at odd multiples of pi by two. Let's write this down formally. This is continuous except when x is an odd multiple of pi by two. That's how we write odd multiples. 2n plus one, this will always be odd wherever n is an integer. So tan x is continuous, mostly continuous, except when x is equal to 2n plus 1 pi by 2, where n belongs to the set of integers. Using the same technique, we can find the continuity for cortex. Again, pause the video, figure out the continuity for cortex. Okay, let's do this together. This is how the graph of cortex looks like. This is also discontinuous at these points. And what are these points? Well, it's discontinuous at zero. It's also discontinuous at pi and then two pi and then minus pi and so on. So it seems like it is discontinuous at all multiples of pi. How do we prove this? Well, cortex is cos x by sin x. Here the denominator is sin x. So this time we have to figure out where sin x is zero. So we have two continuous functions. Their division will also be continuous except when the denominator is zero. So we have to exclude the cases where sin x is zero. And where is sin x zero? Well, sin x is zero for all even multiples of pi by two. Sin zero is zero, sin pi is zero, sin two pi is zero, and so on. And how do we write even multiples? This is continuous except when x is equal to two n times pi by two. Two n will always be even. Two cancels out. For n as an integer, this becomes n pi. So this is what we get. Cortex is continuous except for these points. These points are x equals to n pi, where n belongs to the set of integers. Now you can do the same thing with secant x and cosecant x. For secant, the denominator is cos. For cosecant, the denominator is sine. 